In this video, we're going to review the rules for adding and subtracting with integers. Recall integers are all of your counting numbers as well as their opposites, so adding with positive and negative numbers. When we're adding with positive and negative numbers, it's very important that you pay attention to the signs of the values that you're adding. Uh, the, the one that you're probably most familiar with is adding when you have things that are the same sign. This is, uh, for example, if you did 2 plus 3. Um, in those cases, what we do is we want to add the values that we have, and you want to keep the sign of whatever you were adding. So, for example, if you had something like uh, 2 plus 3, we, they're both positive, so we add and we get 5, and my answer is positive, so I get positive 5. When we have, and the same is true with negatives, negative 2 plus negative 3, we would add the values to get 5, and it would keep the sign and would be negative 5. Sometimes we're going to have different signs. And in cases where you have different signs, what we need to do is actually subtract the values. And we're going to keep the bigger sign this time. I kind of think of this as a uh, kind of a tug of war where if you have like positive 5 and negative 3, positive 5 wins by 2, and so my answer is a positive 2. Um, and so that's kind of one way that you can think of it. The other way that I, is always nice to think of it as well is um, to think about money. So if you have positive values, you're adding to your net worth, and if you have negative money, you owe more money, and then that usually will help you balance out and remember what your rules are. So with that in mind, let's look through these examples here. Here we have 4 plus 6, the signs are the same, very traditional problem, um, and we get positive 10. Add the values, keep the sign. In problem number two, we have negative 3 plus 7. The signs are different, so we're going to subtract to get 4, and we're going to keep the sign of the bigger number, which in this case is positive 7. So my final solution is going to be a positive 4. Let's do that. Uh, in this problem, again, I have a positive 6 and a negative 9. The signs are different, so we're going to subtract. 9 minus 6 gives us 3, and this time I'm going to, again, keep the bigger sign, so I have a negative 9 is bigger than positive 6 in terms of uh, those net values. Uh, the other way that you can kind of think of that is, uh, you know, I have $6 and then I have to pay 9, so I'm 3 in debt. So that's kind of a nice way to think of it. The last one here, we have a negative 5 and a negative 2. Signs are the same, so we just add them together to get 7, and we keep the sign of the values that we're adding together. So we end up with a negative 7 in that particular example. You owe 5, you owe 2 more, so now you owe a total of 7. So that's kind of a nice way to think of it on the back end. When we're subtracting with integers, uh, this can often be confusing sometimes because my rules for addition sometimes had me add and sometimes had me subtract when I was adding. So how does subtraction fit into all of this? Well, the easiest way is to rewrite the problem so that it is no longer a subtraction problem, but it's actually an addition problem. So we're going to rewrite our subtraction as addition, but we've changed the problem when you do that. You can't just change subtracting to adding and expect to get the same thing. The way that you balance it is we're going to um, change it, the subtraction to addition, but then we're going to change to the opposite sign of whatever comes next. Opposite sign of what comes next. All right, so let's look at an example here. For problem number five, we have five minus eight, and we can fix this by changing the subtraction to addition and then changing the sign of what comes next. So my 5 minus 8 gets rewritten, the subtraction gets changed to a plus, and then the positive 8 gets changed to a negative 8. So that helps me to remember what to do. Now when I look at it, notice my signs are different, so I'm going to want to subtract and I'm going to keep the sign of the bigger number, and in this case 5 minus 8 should give me a negative 3. Using this rule of rewriting your subtraction as addition and changing the sign that comes next gets you out of trouble every time. So the next one, we have negative 3 minus 8. My sub, there's my subtraction, so I'm going to change that minus to plus and then change the positive 8 to negative 8 for what comes next. Negative 3 plus negative 8 will give me negative 11 because now the signs are the same. 
so, uh, when we look at number seven here, here we have six minus a negative four. Again, change the subtraction to an addition. The negative four, we want the opposite of it as positive four. So even though this looks like six minus negative four, the minus and the negative end up kind of working their way out, and this ends up being just like six plus four, which is just 10. So we can do that that way. Uh, the last problem again, here we have negative nine. There's a subtraction, so we change that to an addition, and then we change the sign of what comes next, so the negative eight becomes a positive eight when we go through and change that. So now when I look, my negative nine and positive eight signs are different, so I subtract to get one, and I'm gonna have a more negative solution because there were more negatives to start with when I was figuring things out. So again, rewrite those subtractions as additions, change the sign of what comes next, and go from there. Keep in mind, like with number eight, the negative nine, that doesn't change. It's only we change the subtraction and the sign that comes immediately following that number. Um, and then we can go back and use our rules for adding with integers.